Don't we all have our good days where we um, we um, have no pain? I don't know about that. <laughs> where we, uh, we, 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 we have better days than other days. And just about the time we think we got it made, something happens. Kaboom. Kaboom. You're right. You're right. Most likely a statement such as, what in the world just happened? I was, um, Friday. Friday I was going to work. And all of a sudden the van just almost stopped. It just started to spit and sputter and carry on. I thought, Lord, you know i got to get there. So I was about a half a mile down the road. I turned around and came back. And it ended up, it ended up the spark plug wire burned in half. And when, when it burned in half, for some reason, the spark plug cracked in half and part of it was stuck down in the, in the, Brother Jim, I'm not a mechanic. Stuck down the engine. Stuck down in the engine. <laughs> And the thing with Jay. And they were afraid to take it out, so I had to take it from one place to another place. And they make a long story short, they got they got it, they got it taken care of. But it took all day to do it. I didn't plan on that. But if we did, we wouldn't plan on it, would we? I mean, if we planned on being sick. We wouldn't plan on being sick, would we? No. People, uh, people pray then like we don't pray at any other time. Whenever everything's going good, whenever everything's fine, we find it easy to go all day without praying. We should do it because we know by by our living our lives that every Every mountain top eventually has a valley that you have to go through. And it is, it is a fact, someone said to me this week, it's those valleys that get us down. But it is a fact that it's the valleys where we learn what we learn through Christ mostly. Because we depend on him more. But that's when we pray more. It shouldn't be that, uh-oh, something happened, I better start praying. It should be, something probably will happen. I better keep praying. <laughs> I better keep praying. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. This is called the faith chapter in the Bible. I want to just, just read a, a little while here. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For it, for by it, the elders obtained good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds that were formed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Wouldn't it be a great thing that, that if someone could write in, in, a, in, a, in a Bible book about our lives saying that we pleased God? I know Tina, she, she pleased God. Wouldn't that be a great thing? You know, much of, much of what we do in our lifetimes, we choose to do. There's some things that don't happen that way, but much, most of what we do through the day, we choose to do. We might not like it as we choose it. You know, we, we choose to get up and go to work in the morning. We grumble and growl the whole time we go. But we choose to do it. I mean, you could choose to stay home if you want to, without a doubt. We choose what to eat and what not to eat. We, we choose one thing after another through our lives. But the Bible is saying there's two things for sure that we will all face, whether we choose them or not. Number one is death, or number two is the second coming of Christ. 
One of those two things are going to happen in our lifetimes or around our lifetimes. This morning I want us to look at both things and make sure as we come down toward Christmas time that we not only think about the Christmas story as it was back in those days. <coughs> oh, it's about, about April the 9th, brothers, is what I found. About Brother Mike, about the Christmas. We talked last week at the Christmas thing. This has nothing to do with today. This is free. If you weren't here last week, <laughs> but but uh, last week we, we we talked about Christmas not actually being in December because of the way the Scripture is. And it looks like I don't know if you have another another uh, reference or not. By the references that, that that I looked at this week, it looks like it's about April the ninth. Brother Mike come up with with a theory. And I, I sort of agree with him. Don't know why. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Sort of. He thought that, you know, it, it's a true thing that they were going to pay taxes, the reason they were going in the first place. He thought that, that maybe it was April because of the way we pay taxes. <laughs> now, you got to remember, number one, this is the modern age we live in. And number two, he lives in West Virginia. <laughs> Did you see, brother, I stiffed you on Facebook this week about West Virginia? I didn't pay any attention. I don't doubt <laughs> you. opened yourself up, I couldn't resist it. I just couldn't resist it. As soon as I read that, I can't even remember what it was now, but as soon as, you, as, soon as I read that, I just got a big, giant smile. <laughs> couldn't resist it. So we need to be, if there's two things that we're, that we're not going to be able to choose, two things that are unchoosable, probably not a word, but it is now. If there's two things that are unchoosable in our lifetimes, it's death and the second coming. So the fact that we can't choose one over the other, we need to make sure we're ready for both of them because we don't know which one's going to come first. Death or the second coming. And this ought to affect our everyday actions, our everyday thoughts. So with that in mind, let, let me think of a few things, a few words, if you will, to think about as we go through this, this thought process. First of all, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, as part of the story, is we, we, need to be, we need to be grounded. If you, if you have a, a workplace and you've been there for any length of time, you, you're grounded in that workplace. In other words, you know enough about the workplace that you don't have to get the instruction book out and read it anymore. You're grounded. You're, you're solid. You're sturdy. We need to be grounded in the Lord, the things of the Lord, where every, every little wind of doctrine that comes along doesn't shake us. I tell folks most of the time, now some, some, some folks are strong enough to do it, not, not many of us are strong enough to take it very long. I tell folks all the time, be careful, be careful what you watch on TV. Because it, it the 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 uh, the smut that's on TV sneaks up on you, and you end up not serving God, having the wrong thoughts. I've even told I had this this conversation with Janine before she passed many many times. We need to I, I believe we need to even be careful of what religious programming we watch on TV, because not everyone preaches the word the way it's supposed to be preached. And if I tell you one thing, and someone else tells you something else, and someone, yeah, you're right, someone else tells you something else, <laughs> then we can get mixed up and think, well, maybe none of them know what you're talking about. So we need to be careful. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to give you any names of folks that are on TV, but, but for, for sure, for sure, the, lo the local church house is the place to be. Because the local church house is going to be there when, when, a, when a funeral comes along, the local church is going to be there when, when, you, when you have someone to get married, when you have someone in the hospital. I don't want to burst your bubble, but Joe Olstein isn't going to come to visit you in the hospital next week if you get in the hospital. Not going to happen. So we need to be, we need to be grounded in the Lord. There, there's no reason, listen to me now, there's no reason in the age in which we live with the book the way it is, there's no reason that a child of God 
should be uncertain about salvation. My Bible says that once we're saved, we're saved for good. And that, that's, that's, a, that's a blessing to me because I, I do some crazy things every day. I have some crazy thoughts every day. And if I, lost, if I lost my salvation every time I did a crazy thing, I'd be lost more than I'd be saved. And it'd be my luck that the Lord would come back while I'm lost. So I praise God that, 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 I'm, that I'm grounded in the faith that I don't have to lay my head on my pillow at night and worry that if Jesus comes back while I'm sleeping, wouldn't that be a great way to go? If Jesus came back while I was sleeping, that he wouldn't catch me in one of those off times. That he wouldn't catch me. Now, I'm not saying that we should sin and not get it taken care of. We, if, we, if we sin, and we do, we're all sinners, and we all come short of the glory of God. We all do the wrong thing. We all say the wrong thing. We all think the wrong thoughts from time to time. We need to get it taken care of right then. But if we don't, and we go to bed with sin in our life, it's a good thing to know that if Jesus comes back in the middle of the night and we're saved, we're still going to heaven. Amen. Praise God for that. We need to be grounded not only in, in the, the things of the Lord, but we need, we need to be grounded in the Bible. It's, I, I, I still believe that it's this book plus nothing that gets us to heaven. You, you can't earn your way to heaven. You can't buy your way to heaven. None of us are good, good looking enough. Well, for sure you're not. <laughs> none, of us are, none of us have enough brain power. None of us are, are strong enough to, get, to, to even get one step closer to heaven without the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about making, make, make the Bible part of your daily habit. We talked this morning in, in Sunday school about bad habits. And how to, how to break bad habits. But not all habits are bad. There are some good habits. I have a habit of eating every day. And I just love it. <laughs> just love it. So bad, it's not, habits isn't the bad word. It's bad habits that are the bad word. And we need to replace the bad habits with good habits. And what better, what better habit to have every day than to get in the Word of God every single day. Let it, let it be like second nature. I mean, you got up this morning and didn't have to think about getting dressed. I'm glad you did. <laughs> but you didn't have to think about it. You didn't have to... Now, I'm not making light of folks that have this trouble because I know folks that have this trouble. But I don't think anybody in here had to get up and think, this is a sock. No. You knew where the sock went. You know where the gloves go on. You know where the hat fits. You don't even think about it. It's just second nature. You just get up and go. You know, Paul, Peter said that it, that it lives, that this book lives and abides forever. What else can you name that has stood the test of time? I've been watching, I don't know if you've been watching or not, any of the, the hearings on the impeachment things of our president. And it's a, sad, it's a sad state, whether you agree or whether you disagree, whether you're here or listening this morning, whether you agree or disagree, it's a sad state that our country is in. I'm glad that we're still one nation under God. I'm glad that we still, that there's still enough good uh, good people around that realize that it's it's got to be God that has his thumb on the scale in our favor and not somebody else. And nobody's going to fix it but God. If that's the case, we need to learn all we can about the, the things of God, and this book is the way to do it. Get in the book, stay there, study through it, live live by it. We've got to we've got to know what the book says. He tells us also to get grounded in our faith. That's what we were reading about in, in the first couple of verses of, of Hebrews chapter 11. We need to be grounded in our faith. This, I've seen this happen time after time after time. Somebody, somebody will get saved. They'll give their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they're going to the same heaven as I'm going to for sure. According to their mission. They don't, they don't have, they're, they're ones again that don't have to worry about being saved because they already are. But they're, they're, they're cold one time, 
They're hot another time. They're ready to charge hell with a water pistol one day. And the next day they could care less who goes there. They're in church one time. And maybe if nothing else comes into play, they'll be in church again the next time. As long as there's not a ball game in the afternoon or a movie in the morning or Cousin Maybell stops to visit. I, I've, I've told you different times. Anybody have a Cousin Maybell? Man, I'm glad. That didn't make the top ten, though. You know anybody? You, you don't know anybody named Maybell either. You're a heathen. <laughs> but I, I, I told people all, tell people all the time through our ministry. If cousin Maybell drops around on Sunday morning, and she's not planning on going to church with us, she's going to be at the house by herself. Because Sunday's church day. And I know things come into play that you can't be in church every Sunday. I know that happens. I know firsthand how that happens. But it will not be, I just don't feel like going today. Because I guarantee you, tomorrow morning, I, I, I'm getting used to this part-time stuff. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow morning is one of my work days. And tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm not going to feel like going to work. I just know it. I, I'm just already sort of like Brother Keith. i never seen anybody like him in my life. Goes on vacation. The first day he's just all excited. If he's on a three-week vacation, till the third day he's thinking, oh my, it's getting three days closer. Going back to work. <laughs> and he, 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 he got me doing it. It's being grounded in the faith. Not being up one minute and down the next. Not being excited about God today and, care, and could care less about the things of God tomorrow. Why does that happen? Because of the lack of faith. Because of the lack of faith. We can't, we can't reach out and grab a hold of the Lord Jesus Christ like we can other, pe other things and other people. So it, it totally comes down to how much faith we have in Christ. So he says, first of all, he tells us to make sure we're grounded. Grounded in, in these different areas of, of our lives. Secondly, he says then in Hebrews, that we're to be busy. Get busy. Get grounded, number one. Get busy, number two. If you do it backwards, you're going to fall out. Guarantee you're going to slip away. You're going to backslide. You got to get grounded in the word, grounded in the Lord, and then get busy. Paul said, this I say, brethren, the time is short. And the time is short. According to some people, the earth's going to be over in about eight years. And there's going to be no more earth anymore. So if that's the fact, we need to get busy filling heaven today. Amen, Brother Denny? Amen. For sure. Get busy. Get busy living for Christ. It's time, it's time that we just behave ourselves. Just behave yourself. You know the way you're supposed to live for Christ. You know the Bible says that what you're doing, if you're doing something that's wrong, you know it's wrong. You know it's something that you ought to get under the blood of Christ, so do it. Be living for Christ. Get busy looking for Christ. Preacher friend, now I, I don't know if he, if he still does it or not. I, I've seen him do it many a time. Preacher friend, every time he, he walked out the, the door of his church, first thing he'd do is look up. And I thought, what in the world is he doing? He said, I'm looking to see if Jesus is on his way down. I want to, I want to meet him halfway. Now that's far-fetched from what the Word of God says. I mean, what, once the Lord comes back, we're going to be going. There's not going to be any choosing to go up or meet them halfway. But we need to be in such a state where we, if we think about, if we think about it this way, today could be the day when the Lord comes back. Could be. If today is the day that the Lord comes back, I want to be caught in his perfect will. I don't want to be caught doing the wrong thing. I don't want to be, I don't want to be laid in bed at home if I'm supposed to be in church. Or I don't want to be, be at home if I'm supposed to be witness, witness, witnessing to somebody in their house. We need, to be, we need to be busy at the things of Christ, looking for him, and the more I look for him to come back, the busier I'm going to be while, he's, while I'm here. Because today is the day of, of work. 
Thirdly, he tells us we need to make sure above everything else. None of these other things, all, all, everything we've talked about so far is, is for naught if we're not saved, if we're not ready to meet the Lord. We, we live in such an uncertain age. Nobody can say for certain what they'll be doing tomorrow. And I, in, in, in a big way, I know I'm preaching to the choir because I know that none of us in here we, we all in here realize that God doesn't promise us one more breath. Not one more breath. So our message from Hebrews has got to be make sure you're ready for Christ. Make sure you're saved. Get saved today. Today is the day of salvation. When is the acceptable time? Now. What he's telling me is that if, 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 I'm, if I'm without the Lord, and those, those listening, if you're without the Lord this morning, and you don't get saved today, when tomorrow becomes the day, you're going to talk yourself out of it also. You're going to get away from it one way or another. You're going to, you're going to find an excuse. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I found an, ex, an excuse for years. Uh, and, and the excuse was, there's always next week. There's always next week. Let me finish. I remember saying there's always next week. And I was a young person then. Not that I'm old now, but certainly not as old as you. But I was a young person then. My cousin would always try to get me in church. And eventually I did get there and praise the Lord for that that he didn't give up because I give him many reasons to give up. But I remember one certain week saying to him, there's always next week. That same afternoon, and I was I was I was non I was a non-Christian, I was headed for hell. That same afternoon my telephone rang at our house. My dad answered the phone and I could tell it wasn't, wasn't good news when he, when he answered the phone. And my grandmother and my grandfather on my dad's side were on vacation in, in Ohio somewhere. And the roads were icy and a car slid on the road and, got, and was hit by a 20-ton tandem dump truck. They were on vacation and he killed both of them. And I, for, for the longest time, I had nothing to do with it. But for the longest time, I felt guilty because I kept saying, there's always next week. I soon realized, and I want us to realize this morning, that brother and sister, Dear friend, there's not always next week. The Hagerstown paper is full of obituaries that different ones probably thought, I'm only a young person. I'm only a teenager. I'm only 50 years old. Isn't, isn't, isn't 50 years old young anymore? I used to think 50-year-old people were old. 50-year-old people are young now. But don't just go through your days passing it off by saying there's always next week to come to Christ. And Christian friend, there's not always next week to make things right. It's it's time that we stop playing church. We stop playing Christian and get things right with God. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, I beg you to come. I'd, I'd, I'd come for you if I could, but I can't, so you come. If you can't remember a time in your life when you asked the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, 
What you're saying is, there's always next week. Dear Christian friend, if you're here this morning and there's something that you need to get under the blood of Christ and you know it, you're thinking about it now. Not a terrible thing, but it is a terrible thing if it keeps you away from Christ. And if Jesus comes back today, he's going to catch you in the time frame of there's always next week to get it right. But there's not always next week. Be saved today. Be right today. And if tomorrow the Lord comes back, we'll approach heaven with a smile. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray with all my heart and with all my being that you would reach down and touch us in a special way. That we, each one of us, would realize that it's only by the grace of God we get to heaven. There's nothing we've done, nothing we can do. It's only by the grace of God that we get there. If you're here this morning, you're not saved. If you're listening this morning, you're not saved. I beg you to come to Christ. I beg you to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I beg you, I'd, I'd do it for you if I could, but I can't. So you do it. Do what, do what I did that one, one special Saturday night at the Salty Freeze ice cream store. And give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. No special words. No, no special prayer you have to pray. But we need to confess with our mouth, the Lord says, and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. With heads bowed and with eyes closed, if you haven't given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, do it now. It's something like, and you can follow me right along. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. Help me as best I can to live every day for you and thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. With heads still bowed and eyes still closed, if you can pray a prayer such as that, or if you just now did, my Bible says you're ready for heaven. So then the next step is, dear Christian friend, make sure that if Jesus comes back today, everything's settled under the blood of Christ. That he's not going to catch us in the mode of, there's always tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the time to, to get things under the blood of Christ. And I beg you this morning, whether you're in Pinesburg or listening over the, over the Facebook feed, that you'd realize that it's getting right time with God. It's, it's getting right time with God, friend. So get right with God today. Do it now. Father, I thank you for the decisions that we made just this minute. Because each and every one of us have just now made a decision. We decided, some of us decided to accept Christ. Praise God for it. Some of us decided to get things right with God and praise God for it. Some of us decided that everything's okay and praise God for that. But we all made a decision and I pray that you would seal that decision that you would cause us to live under that decision all week long. I ask you, Lord, to watch over us now as we, that are here in this place, go about our separate ways, that we go across the highways of, of life and the highways headed to our houses, that you would get us through this week and get us to our houses today safely. And I pray that you bring us back next week as we're ready for Christmas. Watch over God and direct us. We give, you name, we give your name the praise and all the glory. For it's in your name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.